Hi, it's Lance Yolanoff, editor-in-chief of Mashable, and I'm here with Elon Musk, who is the uh, founder. CEO and chief, chief designer of SpaceX. Yeah, is that all? Is that uh, all? And, yeah. also, and also the co-founder of Tesla. Yeah. Tesla Motors. Yeah. And, and right, uh, CEO of Tesla. And then there's something called PayPal that you were involved yeah. with. In, uh, I helped, helped create PayPal back, back in the day. It's right. been 10 years since we sold it. I was going to say, is there, is there anything else that you've done that maybe we don't have on this list? So we should... um, well, um, I, I'm chairman of SolarCity, which um, might IPO later this year. They're the largest provider of solar power in the country. Oh, okay. Well, see, I did not have that on my list, of course. There was something I didn't know. Uh, so, you know, you weren't born in America. You were actually born in South Africa, and you, you yes. were born I got here as soon as I could, though. What's that? <laughs> I got here as soon as I could. Right, right. Well, you certainly did. And, and, but you uh, were born after uh, the, the, landing, the lunar landing. That's right, 71. Right? Yeah. So I was really curious, right. you know, with your involvement with SpaceX um, and getting set to do what is, I guess, the first private launch uh, outside, you know, into space, into, you know, who else has launched into space into the, into the International Space Station? No one oh, else. Right. We'll be the first uh, private spacecraft to right. dock with the space station. Right. So yeah. what was the first space event that you saw on television as a child? Wow, um, probably Star Trek. <laughs> oh well, uh, okay, well that's it. <laughs> so Star Trek. Um, so and so Battlestar was Galactica, it, the original. Um, so did you see? And, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, did, I mean uh, so the series? space shuttle I, was probably. I, I spent some time thinking about this. I, 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 think, I think we pro I probably saw the space shuttle on TV. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, South Africa had very lame TV. It's, right. Like we literally had. One channel in, in the early days, it was one channel, and it was only on for half a day. Um, <laughs> I hope it was half of the day, um, and, it, and, and yeah, the news was so, like. So, how did you end up getting hooked on internet. space? Um, well, my interest in space uh, is um, mostly, I mean, sort of from a philosophical standpoint, of that, that 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 I believe we should be a space faring civilization and ultimately a multi planet species, um, and. Uh, the, the thing that ties together my various endeavors was that uh, when I was in college, I thought, what, what are the things that, um, would, that I thought would most affect the future of humanity? And um, they were the internet, um, uh, sustainable energy, both production and consumption, and making life multiplanetary, um, or, or becoming a true space bank civilization. So those are the three things that I thought would most affect humanity. And I wanted to be involved uh, in those three things. At the time, if you'd asked me, I would have thought I would have said that it's unlikely that I would be involved in space because I thought that was the province of large governments. Um, so, uh, and, and at the, I mean, I, I don't want to belabor the question, but the, the, the my originally it, uh, what, what what got me started in space was um, was not starting a rocket company. It was actually um, I wanted to do uh, a philanthropic mission. Uh, to land a small greenhouse on the surface of Mars, um, and uh, it was called Mars Oasis. And uh, the idea there was to capture the public imagination, uh, get people excited about the idea of sending life to Mars. The, pu the public tends to be uh, uh, excited about precedents and superlatives, and this would be the furthest that life's ever traveled and the first uh, life on Mars. So, All right. So you're um, you're clearly very interested in manned space missions. Your Dragon, your Dragon module. Right, the, the the spaceship that's going to launch on April thirtieth can hold seven astronauts. Yes. And you believe? Do you believe that all space travel, space missions, should be manned? No. Uh, most most a lot of space travel will be unmanned. Yeah, and in fact, although the craft that we'll be launching, um, hopefully in about four weeks, um, to uh, to be most preparations go well, um, uh, the LO is capable of carrying. Seven people who will not be carrying anyone on this mission. Okay, so this will be this will be an unmanned mission. Correct. Um, and uh, all remote control to do the docking. Who ends up doing the docking on the ISS? Um, so, so the, the thing that's that's interesting and maybe slightly scary is that Dragon is a robotic spaceship that's automatically navigating itself to the space station. And no, not scary at all. I mean, <laughs> it just it just pauses at various points okay, and asks good. if everything's okay. <laughs> so it asks permission to proceed. That's you that's know. good. That's good. But who knows? It could be like hell nine thousand. We like we say open the pod bay doors and the thing doesn't do it. <laughs> All, right. All right. That's that's okay. So so no one's going up right now. But obviously, I've seen the pictures on your website, and you know, certainly are building it with that idea. So this is kind of a, a, 
a little bit more. It's an intense proof of concept, right? If this does it, are you bringing any cargo with you? Yes. You are. What, yeah. What's going on? Uh, it's, since this is the, the first mission, it's demonstration mission, it's mostly um, it, stuff that is uh, valuable there, but not valuable if it's lost. So it's things like food and consumables, other consumables. Okay, comic books, things like yeah. that. <laughs> so, you know, you step in. SpaceX steps in. You're, you're, you're competing uh, for this contract. Mm -hmm. When you look at NASA and you know, where they got to and basically the, the end of the manned space uh, program, do you have any thoughts about where NASA went wrong and how SpaceX potentially does it right? Well, I think, first of all, I, 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 it's important to uh, acknowledge the role of NASA. Um, I would not have been able to start SpaceX without the amazing work that NASA has done in the past, nor would SpaceX be, um, ha have achieved, you know, be, be where it is today without the, the help of NASA. Um, so this should not be seen as some sort of competition with, with NASA, but rather um, a collaboration. Um, so you almost feel like this is like the next logical step. It, it, it is. And, um, I think uh, what, what SpaceX uh, can do is, is, is allow NASA to, to um, take a given budget and achieve much more with it. Um, and yeah, that was actually something, I mean, I don't know if you can get into numbers, but you know, we always hear about the billions upon billions of dollars spent by NASA for, for anything, even just for flying the space shuttle over and over again. Uh, I assume SpaceX is more uh, cost efficient. It would be, can you give me any sense in dollars? I mean, how many times yeah. can you fly SpaceX uh, Dragon uh, versus uh, a space shuttle? Well, we're about eight times less than the space shuttle. Um, now, the space shuttle, um, and, and we, you know, in crew configuration, we can carry the same number of people as the space shuttle. Um, and then in, in cargo with configuration, we can carry, we can carry less. Uh, but now that the space station is assembled, um, there really isn't a need for the added cargo capacity of the space the space shuttle. So the space shuttle would be, it would be kind of like right, you're not you're going, going to visit your house in a giant semi-trailer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wouldn't make much sense. Right, um, right. So you end up, you're ending up just bringing supplies <coughs> and, and experiments, and maybe additional robots. Yeah, it, it is, it, 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 exactly. It is very important to be able to take things back and forth from, from the space station. Um, obviously, you need to resupply the astronauts with uh, food and whatnot. You also need to bring up um, space experiments. Um, replacement hardware, you need to bring experiments back to us so they can be analyzed in, in laboratory. Um, we need to bring back a hardware that needs to be repaired. Uh, so it's just, a, it's really a, a very important uh, cargo uh, tra transport function. And in fact, w um, we're the only means of bringing cargo back from the space station. Um, it, the, the story is you can, it's, you, you can bring people back, but um, it's very small, so you can only like basically whatever you can tuck under your seat. But like in terms of... So I mean, it's like, a, it's like story, an airplane. Yeah, uh, it's they have a, any what, what, way storage? smaller. No. It's, it's 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 like you basically it's like a you know in, in a fetal position. Right, it's, and Soyuz is the Russian spaceship. I mean, that's it is. It's we're, very that's tiny. our taxi right now. That's right. our taxi and, back and forth. But to give you a, rel a sense of relative size, Dragon is much larger than the Soyuz. In fact, you can put the entire Soyuz spacecraft in just inside the pressurized section of Dragon. Wow. Yeah. So why? I'm just curious, why is it so much bigger? Why did you make it large? Is that just for comfort? Is it, there some Yeah, okay. comfort and, and, and cargo capacity. Um, so Soyuz can carry three people in a very cramped environment, and we can carry seven people in a roomy environment. Um, yeah. And you're working with NASA astronauts, right? Those are the people who are training with you right now uh, yes. for the event eventuality of a manned mission. Yeah, uh, exactly. We have um, a number of, of, of ex-NASA personnel working at SpaceX. In fact, we, we also have uh, NASA personnel, uh, active NASA personnel who are permanently resident at SpaceX. Um, and, and we have a, a tremendous amount of back and forth. So at any given point, there, there are um, a, a bunch of SpaceX people at NASA, a bunch of NASA people at SpaceX. And then we're also very uh, closely connected electronically. So um, when we do this mission, um, SpaceX mission control and, and NASA Houston mission control are uh, seeing all the same data. So uh, obviously these astronauts, you know, they're behind you 100%, and we've heard about uh, you know, Buzz Aldrin's statements, but I even know that there's, there's some differing opinions. There's some differing <laughs> opinions. Uh, John Glenn, yeah. you know, tremendous frustration that we're, you know, we don't have, the, the U.S. doesn't have the wherewithal to send yeah. people into space. But I, I'm curious if you have spoken to him at all, because uh, it would seem like he would be behind, or, you know, supporting what you're doing. Uh, John Glenn? Um, actually, no, I have not spoken to John Glenn. Um, I have spoken to many astronauts, but not, not, not him. Uh, yeah. 
Right. And so you're super involved with all this stuff. We talked about it, and I didn't even know about the solar energy thing. And, uh, you know, uh, someone named Orfitz, O-F-R-I-T-Z, from our community wants to know how you did it all. Like, what do you, you know, are there time management tips here? I mean, how are you, how are you managing your day? You are running to two right now very real and very intense businesses mm -hmm. with, with uh, especially on the SpaceX side, uh, tremendously high stakes. Sure. So give me give us the tips so we all know what to do. Um, God, I wish I wish I had good tips, uh, <laughs> but I I do a lot of email. Um, I, wherever possible, I try to uh, communicate asynchronously with email, um, and and I, I'm I can email. I'm really good at email. <laughs> so, so I got skills. You, you let so you I let mad stuff. skills in the email front. <laughs> Um, Elon Musk has mad email skills. That's yeah, very much. So, um, so what does that mean, though? Are I, you basically letting so, you know you busy doing other things, and you sit down and do like a power email session where you get through like I'm constantly on email. So oh, at, at every you know every interstitial moment, there's uh, I'm, I'm taking care of email, and then um, I'll have meetings during the day, uh, and, and then I'll usually have a bunch of email and have to get them done at night. Um, so. Um, and, and, and I spend about half my time on SpaceX, about half on Tesla, and um, so, I mean, to, to, well, to, normal, to be precise, in, in, like a normal right. week would be Monday at SpaceX, then Tuesday, Wednesday at Tesla, uh, uh, Thursday and, and half of Friday at SpaceX, and then the, the remaining half of Friday is at the Tesla Design Studio, which is adjacent to SpaceX, and then the weekends are with my kids. Uh, all right, so that's yeah. a pretty good I got a schedule. Too, but there, there, there's going to be. I mean, uh, I'll be at Coachella on the twentieth. <laughs> <laughs> are there are there core principles? Four, you know, like hours. somebody <laughs> somebody like you is a doer. Okay, uh, you 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 don't just see a problem. You find it. You create. You execute. So what? You know, is there some sort of thing? I mean, is, is there a book you read, or is this, is it just part of your DNA that you're somebody who finishes stuff? Um. I've actually not read any books on time management, um, but I do. I do try you may to make, write one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do. I do try to um, optimize the productivity of every given day. I think it's very important to have a feedback loop, like where you're, you're constantly thinking about um, what, what you've done and how you could be doing it better. Um, I think that's 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 probably the single best bit of advice. Is just constantly be. be Thinking about how you could do things better and, and uh, quit questioning yourself. I'd so you don't go, draw, go, go play guitar, sing. Come on, you sing. I can whistle. You can whistle. Um, actually, can you whistle anything for us? I'm just curious. Are you actually good at it? Yeah, not bad at whistling. What, what, name a tune. Uh, <laughs> you, you pick the tune. You whistle. We'll, we'll take anything you you're able to actually oh, whistle. Whistling after. is like so uncool. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Uh, um, I, I know I'm like Look, laughing. Now you can't, can't, um... no, can't do it. Fly me to the moon. Do you notice how whistle that? Sure. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's really nice. You're welcome. Yeah. Well done. So uh, let's uh, switch gears a little bit. I okay. love to say that because I want to talk about Tesla. Uh, so uh, I was. You we know, have I no gears. No, 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 that's right. Well, I, actually, I wrote down this um, this quote from a review of uh, one of your uh, your cars. The real story, though, is the eerily muted thrust from the electric motor. You mm -hmm. know, basically, you know, this is a race. A sports sounds like a car. land speeder from Star Wars. Right, a sports car. When you yeah. press the accelerator, you can go up to 125 miles per hour. Yeah, it's electronically limited. Yeah, and and it doesn't make that normal sound because it's a completely different kind of motor. Yeah, I think it's kind of, it's kind of a cool, sort of subtle, uh, kind of jet turbine sound because uh, the the motor goes up to 14,000 RPM, so it, it's got this like um, subtle sort of turbine sound, which I think is cool. So, and, and also I got what's a neat number. is like, like you can accelerate really fast, uh, like let's say right. you're at a, at a at a stoplight or whatever, right. and, and you can take off and, and you can you can floor it and not seem like a jackass uh, <laughs> because so, cause normally you can floor like a gasoline car, it's like ah, and you're like right, but the guy. wheels would still spin. With no, the they wheels won't. They won't spin. Well, if you turn off traction control, they will, but that's okay. unwise. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there are you know. 
one of the models is like hundred thousand dollars. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Is that the base? That, that's the, that, no, that's the that's the sports car. That's the sports uh, car. So, so what's the uh, what's the the lowest price uh, Tesla so, so right this, now? The, the Tesla Model S sedan, which goes into production in a few months, is um, fifty thousand dollars. Okay. And it's a four door sort of sports sedan. And. Um, Kind of like about the size of a BMW 5 Series. Right, and I've seen it. It's actually a gorgeous looking car. Thanks. And so is the other, the Tesla, the Volkswagen. The Model X? Yeah, oh, oh, really yeah, sure. gorgeous. Um, yeah. um, but according to your website, you sold about 2100 of, of the Roadster, of the, the Roadster. Of the Roadster, okay. Yeah. And yeah. so at this point, do you consider Tesla a success? Well, I think Tesla is sort of um, a, sex, a success on some levels. Um, uh, you know, the reason I, I put so much effort into, into uh, creating and, and building Tesla is uh, because we wanted to serve as a catalyst for the electric car transformation. So um, we, we needed to show that electric cars could be um, attractive, fast, uh, and long range. And previously, people had thought that electric cars were, were kind of ugly, short range, and, and low performance, kind of like a golf cart. And so we had to, to, had to break that perception, which I think we did with, with the Roadster. Um, uh, and then, and, and that also set a lot of things in motion. Um, the, the, the announcement of the Tesla Roadster is what got the, the Chevy Bolt going, which was uh, Bob, Bob Lutz from GM was kind of to acknowledge. Um, and then the, the, the Nissan Leaf um, and a number of other electric car programs uh, came as a result. So I think we helped set the, set the ball in motion. Um, now what's important is to continue the momentum, you know, because there have been prior false dawns of, of electric vehicles. You know, there was the EV1, yes. and, you know, as yes. chronicled in... Who and, killed uh, the electric car? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't, we do not want, who killed the electric car again? Right, <laughs> to be, right that, please, We do please, not please. want that and movie. We certainly don't want any part of that. But so, so, <laughs> she's got a $50,000 right. car and you've got a $100,000 car, but why doesn't Tesla have a, a $9,000 electric car? Well, um, maybe 9,000 is, is that, 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 that's, a, that's a tough one, but let, let's say, you know, that a typical, like the average car would, would be in the, in the, in the $25,000 range. That's sort of like the, the median, maybe, maybe including options, maybe yeah. it's around $28,000 or something, it's getting the median sale price. Um, the, uh, we, 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 do, we do intend to get there ourselves, uh, and that'll be with our third generation uh, car. So, and the basic business plan of Tesla, which I actually articulated in the very beginning, um, I wrote a blog piece called the Tesla Master Plan, <laughs> genius as it was, um, is, is really dumb and simple. It's, and, but I think it's the only, uh, the only path to success, um, which is to start with a, with a low volume, high price car, um, then go to a medium volume, medium price, and then go to a high volume, low price. And, and we're kind of in step two with Model S that's right. coming out, um, and we're going to step three. Now, uh, with our partners, uh, Daimler and Toyota, we are actually pro uh, going, we're able to leap forward to step three um, because with Daimler, we've, we, we did the uh, electric Mercedes A-Class uh, and the electric Smart. And now those were primarily in Europe, so our American mm -hmm. audience wouldn't have seen much of that. Um, but uh, but the, the car that's coming out soon is the, the new electric RAV4, which we're doing in partnership with Toyota. We're, we're producing the battery pack and the motor and the power electronics, basically the, power, the whole powertrain. Right. Um, so it's got Tesla technology. Um, but, but it's combined with, with uh, Toyota um, vehicle engineering and, and their high production of, of the RAV4, which is their most popular SUV. Um, and so that's, that's going to provide an affordable electric car very soon, um, this, you know, in, in months, basically. Yeah. So I'm just curious, uh, uh, what do you find more satisfying, driving a Tesla at 120 miles per hour or launching a rocket? Well, I think they're both interesting problems. Um, of, of a different, the different kinds of problems, but they're both, both very interesting. Um, but it's kind of like asking what's your favorite kid, you know? Uh, <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, they're both important problems. I mean, I think, I think that um, the, the single largest problem, macro problem that humanity faces this century is solving the sustainable energy problem, you know, sustainable production and consumption of energy. Um, but then I think the, the the sort of longer time frame problem that's, that's really important to solve is making life multi 